Spotlight. Today we're visiting Gordon Clark, his beautiful house here in Cape Town Half Bay. He has created an exhibition that is not only beautiful but philosophical. So we're very excited to have Gordon Clark in our spotlight. Okay, let's go meet him. This, so these are the shots from the show. Yeah. And basically, the unbearable likeness of seeing. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with that name? Well, actually, um, Catherine who's the curator, and Sean, who you're yeah. with tonight, uh -huh. helped me with the writing. We went through millions of different words, and we found a lot of the stuff had been used. So, of course, the unbearable likeness of being from the movie. Exquisite. It's such a great, um, it's so memorable, just that, that line. So mm. we decided to turn it into scene, because we felt like, for a lot of people looking at an image, um, Sometimes they don't want to look at something that's dark, or sometimes they only want to see something that's dark. So yeah. either way, I felt like this was a great opportunity to just um, make a suggestion to people. I drove out one day um, with my camera, yeah. and um, ironically, it was Catherine who said, <coughs> somewhere along the road, on the side of the road, there's goats. Let's go and look for these goats. I said, okay, fine. I looked down, this road and went, oh, there's some goats. So we kind of drove along there. And then all of a sudden, this guy stepped in the road. He was like, hey, what are you guys doing here? Yeah. And he was, he had this sort of very protective kind of energy for his little neighborhood. And I looked at him, I said to him, hi, what's your name? He said, my name is Moxin. I said, okay, Moxin, can I take your picture? He said, yeah, you can take my picture. So I went, got the camera, and I shot that image. And we kind of forgot about it. Went back, yeah. processed the film, had a look, I went, ah. So this is where it all started. This was the this was how the the whole unbearable likeness of seeing was conceived by this man, Mongi Singh. And he lives in a small community alongside the N2 in Cape Town. What a beautiful picture, what a beautiful man. So you get the essence of this show and I think what Gordon is most trying to say is we judge too quickly and the way he's created these metaphors, these boxes and with all the sort of exterior on the outside which is really the perceived person and as you look into the box the interior, so the truth and it's not there's no judgment in that. There's no good, there's no bad. It's just the outside versus the inside. And there was this young girl, Amina, who was, she sort of jumped on the back of my truck. She was four and a half years old. I mean, she's really strong. And we got there, the second day I got there, mm. they were all watching this, the other little boys playing soccer, mm. which they just made their own little soccer thing up. So what happened was that um, she had her doll and she'd obviously been running around in the mud this winter. You yeah. Know? And she was holding onto this doll and she kind of looked at me and I got the shot. And that was like, wow. And I got back and I looked at that image and went, okay. The story's about now he's the protector and I want to follow this little girl. We went inside the kitchen and there's some images that you'll yeah. see in the show. Okay. Um, where there's five images and you see her sitting down mm. with her head down like this, not getting her own way. And Muxin with his hand over his face. Mm -hmm. And then finally she sort of says, I want this and I want that and then move it to the other side of the table <coughs> and she gets the sandwich first before the boys, you know. I love it. So a, a very strong my own heart. Yeah, so it was a very like it was a very strong so that's set that a lot. And but then how did this family feel about you sort of just coming into their world and, and sort of taking these pictures or Well I became friendly with Moxin, we started talking and yeah. I gave him time. When you give people time, yeah. They give you time back. Then you kind of Develop the you understand what you wanted to do? No, I didn't understand, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just said I wanted to keep shooting pictures. So was this just very organic? You wanted to shoot pictures, no... Well, then he said to me, because I said, well, down the road are all these tires, what's going on down there? Yeah. I said, well, it's very dangerous, but I'll take you down and I'll show you. Yeah. So he took me there and that's when I met this guy. Okay, and what is this man's name? This man's Francine. And is Francine part of this family? Do they know Not each other? Not at all. They, they say hello. Okay. But he said, you know, there's the tires, and that's the guy with the cows. Mm. So I connected the two together. Yeah. Immediately. So the yeah. next day I was back there shooting Francine. Yeah. You know? 
And with Francie, it was very difficult because his English was not bad. He's from the Eastern Cape. Okay. So I met his brother. <coughs> so what I ended up doing with him <coughs> was every time I shot him, I gave him like a hundred rand an hour. You know? okay. But I said to his brother, I said, Where, if any of these pictures sell, we'll come and find him and give him money. Okay. Then I drove um, down the freeway back towards Cape Town. Yes. And I saw these guys with these horses. And I went, ah, oh, horse work. And after I'd done that, I took a, I remembered I'd gone like about a year prior to that, I'd gone out to, um, to Spear. Yes. And I'd seen this girl, Alex. So it was all in that same area. Yeah. So those, all those worlds came together. Yes. Muxin, Francine, yes. Alex, and uh, Nathan, um, Ashley, and Damien from the Horse Boys. Because they looked like gangsters. And, and I really loved them because... When I approached them straight away, they were like, they had the gangster thing. Yeah. So I put that as the front part of the story, because people are going to see that. On the outside, they're going to go, these are rough kids. Yes. But then there's inside the story, inside their little shells, inside their little cubicles, are these delicate moments of the one guy that looks like a complete gangster, just mm -hmm. cuddling with a horse on the ground, and, you know. Yes. So it's all these contrasts. And then, of course, I went out to this friend of mine's farm, mm -hmm. and I found the other guy, Chico. The one with the buffalo and the rhino. And he looked, yes. he, he, he looked like a sort of Mozambican warlord, you know, and I watched him with the, uh, um, the security guys who all had guns to make sure that people were poaching the rhinos, you know, and I watched him talking to them. Very and protective. Them. Yeah. Yes. In a way, I fooled people who, you know, not fooled them, but I, I tempted them with the idea of quick judgment. And every time an image sells, they'll get a little piece of something. Exactly. But at least that way, they know that someone else is thinking about them. Yeah, and I mean, I guess they are. They are the subject. Without they, them, it wouldn't have happened. We don't happened. have an image. So exactly. it's it's the karmic relationship. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So we're very we're very tight. I've I've offered myself up as the lamb, and you're going to shoot an amazing shot, and we're going to watch image you work. Of you will figure it out at yes. some time. Yes. Okay. Very soon. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Very, very exciting. look it's hectic I mean actually you know those girls that do this um, I I think you're amazing amazing because this is so <laughs> you get wounded you climb up rocks it's life-threatening you almost die The things that people have written about the show, um, beautiful work, I'm stunned, inspired. These photos capture so much more than just the lives of these people. We travel many journeys and encounter many souls. May the richness of these two always be the fountain of your creativity. Isn't that beautiful? It's really, really beautiful. So we have the good stuff and then we have the bullshit so we had some man just write bullshit in the book which is 
as Gordon was saying, he loved because he loved the, the way it was being provoked and it, it provoked him. So that's really, really great because you need that. You need the yin and the yang because that's what this is all about. It's about the outside versus the inside. It's about the judgment versus the reality. And it really is, it's great to see that, that he's actually managed to capture all of that. something is next we'll know soon okay okay is it all top secret well i don't know it's evolving in my head as we speak okay. <laughs> okay. i never stop going you know i love it okay thank okay. you very much and it's Thanks. been amazing thank you very much okay